This video is about the Receiver Operating Characteristic Curve Analysis, also known as the ROC Analysis, for Medical Diagnostic Test Evaluation. This technique is used in continuous diagnostic test results versus a gold standard. When we say continuous diagnostic test results, the results of the test is in numerical form. And then the gold standard would indicate whether the patient really has a disease or not. If the test result, for example, is the white blood cell count, and then let's say the gold standard is a classification whether the patient has leukemia or not. It is a fact that a healthy person has a WBC count of about 4 to 11 times 10 raised to 9 per liter while patients with leukemia have elevated WBC count of 100 to 400 times 10 raised to 9 per liter. Now, if the lab test results came in and it showed that your WBC count, let's say, is 120 times 10 raised to 9 per liter, could the doctor say that, I'm sorry, but I think most probably you have leukemia? Another example, suppose that the numerical variable this time is age. And then, the gold standard would classify whether the patient has prostate cancer. Now, of course, this is only applicable to males. It is a fact that prostate cancer mainly affects men of over 50 years old. And the risk increases as they get older. Now, for example, a patient said that he frequently urinates, especially at night, which is one symptom of prostate cancer. And he is 52 years old. Could the doctor say that, I'm sorry, but I think most probably you have prostate cancer? Another example, it is a fact that a normal serum calcium level is 8 to 10 mg per deciliter. And hypercalcemia, which is defined as the serum calcium level greater than 10.5 mg per deciliter, and it is reported that hypercalcemia occurs in up to 20 to 30 percent of renal cancer patients. When a patient who claimed that he has frequent back pain and with lab results showing that serum calcium is 11 mg per deciliter, does he have renal cancer? Now, given those three scenarios, the goal of this topic, which is the ROC analysis, is to identify the optimal cutoff that will separate those with the disease and not. Meaning, we're going to determine the cutoff and how accurate will that cutoff be. Now, to have an example, we're going to make use of the MIRNA.R data. MIRNA is actually microRNA, which is a small non-coding RNA molecule which is reported to be elevated in patients with acute myeloid leukemia or AML. Suppose that a group of researchers wanted to identify the optimal cutoff of microRNA-223 that identifies patients with and without AML. Use 5% level of significance. Now notice that the data on the left we have two variables, which is the microRNA-223, which is a quantitative variable, and then whether the patient has acute myeloid leukemia or not. One here means the patient has acute myeloid leukemia, while zero means the patient has no acute myeloid leukemia. We're going to identify the optimal cutoff, or in other words, the best cutoff, that will separate those patients with AML and those patients without AML. Now, to identify the best cutoff, we're going to make use of each value as a possible cutoff. And then how we're going to determine if it's the best one, we're going to perform some measures of accuracy. So we're going to start with the first one, in which what if the cutoff is greater than or equal to 0.82. Now, using that cutoff, we know that all these patients have microRNA223 of greater than or equal to 0.82. That's why this is 20. And no patient here has microRNA223 of less than 0.82. And among these 20 patients, 11 of them are positive, 
while 9 of them are negative. So that gives us 11 patients who are positive of AML and 9 patients of having no AML with at least 0.82 of microRNA-223. And of course, since none of them has microRNA-223 of less than 0.82, we know that this value and this value are both equal to 0. Now given this table, since this is the true status of the patient and we are testing these two values, it's like having this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. Now we may compute further for the sensitivity, which is A over A plus B. So 11 over 11, that is 100%. In other words, if we're going to make use of this cutoff, the sensitivity of that cutoff is 100%. Or in other words, out of 11 patients who really have AML, 11 of them will be identified using this cutoff. And further, we may also compute for the specificity, which is just D over C plus D. So that's 0 over 9. So in other words, we have 0% specificity. Meaning, out of 9 patients who really doesn't have AML, none of them was identified to be negative using this cutoff. And further, we may compute for the accuracy, which is A plus D over the total. So 11 plus 0 divided by the total, so that gives us 55% accuracy using again the cutoff, which is greater than or equal to 0.82. Now we may add three columns, which is sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. And we know that using 0.82, the sensitivity is 100%, specificity is 0%, and accuracy of 55%. Now let's have the next one. Suppose the cutoff is greater than or equal to 0.93. Now, given this cutoff, there will now be 19 patients left who have microRNA of at least 0.93 and only one patient with microRNA-223 of less than 0.93. Now, given this 19 patients with microRNA-223 of at least 0.93, still 11 of them have AML while 8 of them are negative of AML. And among those patients with microRNA-223 of less than 0.93, no one is positive but there's one who is negative of AML. So given this table now, still if this is your A, B, C, and D, sensitivity is A over the total A plus B, we're going to have a sensitivity still of 100%. And specificity this time of 1 over 9, which is 11.1%. And further, the accuracy is 11 plus 1, which is 12 over the total, which is 20. So that gives us 60% accuracy if the cutoff is at least 0.93. We may put that in the table with sensitivity of 100%. Specificity of 11.1 and accuracy of 60%. Now, if the cutoff is 1.02, there will now be 18 patients with at least 1.02 and 2 patients of having microRNA-223 of less than 1.02. Now, among these 18 patients, we see now that there are now 10 patients left who are positive of AML while there are 8 patients who are negative of AML. And among these 2 patients with microRNA-223 of less than 1.02, one of them is positive and one of them is negative of AML. So given this table now, again we may compute for the sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. So the sensitivity is 90.9%. Specificity is 11.1% and accuracy of 55%. Now moving on, let's have the next possible cutoff which is 1.05. Now given this cutoff, 
we can see that there are now 17 patients left with microRNA of at least 1.05 and 3 patients with microRNA-223 of less than 1.05. And among the 17 patients, still there are 10 cases of AML and 7 patients who are negative of AML. And among these three patients with microRNA-223 of less than 1.05, one of them is positive and two of them are negative of AML. We may compute for the sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. So that gives us 90.9% .9 sensitivity, 22.2% specificity, and 60% accuracy. Moving on, let's have the next possible cutoff, which is 1.26. Now, given this cutoff, we can see that there are now 16 patients with microRNA-223 of at least 1.26 and 4 patients with microRNA-223 of less than 1.26. And among these 16 patients, we can see here that there are 9 cases of AML while 7 patients who are negative of AML. And among these four patients, two of them are positive of AML and two of them are negative of AML. So the cutoff, which is at least 1.26 of microRNA-223, gives us a sensitivity of 81%, specificity of 22%, and accuracy of 55%. Now, we may continue with the other cutoff using the same procedures and we're going to arrive with these values of sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. On the last part, after reaching the last one, which is 8.30, we're going to add in which the cutoff is for greater than 8.30, in which obviously, None of the patients have microRNA-223 of greater than 8.30 since the last one is 8.30 and all of the 20 patients have microRNA-223 of less than or equal to 8.30. So this gives us a sensitivity of 0%, specificity of 100% and accuracy of 45%. Now given these results, which cutoff is the best? Others simply make use of the accuracy. The one with the highest accuracy, in this case, 1.43 and 1.84. So others would already claim that 1.43 or 1.84 is the best cutoff. However, many articles online do not use the accuracy as a way of determining the optimal cutoff. Most of them are using what we call the receiver operating characteristic or the ROC curve in which it involves graphing a two-dimensional figure in which the horizontal axis or the x-axis is the false positive rate or 1 minus specificity while the vertical axis or the y-axis is the sensitivity. Now since the highest possible value of sensitivity and specificity is 100%, we know that the highest value of sensitivity will be 1 and the highest possible value of false positive rate or 1 minus specificity is also 1. Since the highest value of specificity is 1 and the lowest value is 0, then 1 minus 0 gives us the highest possible false positive rate which is 1. And of course, the point of origin here has a value which is 0, 0. Now we may graph in this two-dimensional coordinate system the results that we came up a while ago. So we already have the sensitivity, however, we still need to compute for the false positive rate, which is simply 1 minus specificity. So 1 minus these values, we're going to have these false positive rates. Now plotting these points, starting with point 0.82, we're going to have a sensitivity of 100% and false positive rate of 100% or in other words, we're going to plot 1.0 and 1.0. So basically, that is just the point here. Next, let's have the next one which is 0 
0.93 has a sensitivity of 100% and specificity of 11.1% which leads us to false positive rate of 1 minus 11.1% which is 88.9. So graphing this as 1.0 and graphing this as 0.889, we're going to have this point. So that point is when the cutoff is 0.93. And this one again is the point when the cutoff is 0.82. Moving on, let's have 1.02. The sensitivity is 90.9% and the false positive rate is 88.9%. So graphing 0.909 and 0.889, we're going to have this point. So this point is when the cutoff is 1.02. Next, let's have 1.05 in which the sensitivity is 0.909 and false positive rate of 0.778. And we're going to have this point. So that point is generated using the cutoff which is 1.05. So all we have to do now is to proceed with plotting of points using the results that we came up a while ago. And we're going to have this figure. Now, the question is, where is the optimal cutoff? Now, many journal articles published online uses the Udens Index, also known as the Udens J statistic, in determining the optimal cutoff. All we have to do is to compute for the sensitivity plus specificity minus 1. That will be the Udens Index J of each cutoff. Graphically, the Udens Index J is the vertical distance of the cutoff with this diagonal line. Or in other words, all we have to do is to compute for all the possible values of J and the one that has a maximum value that is the optimal cutoff. Now given this data that we have, we're going to compute for the Udens Index J again of each possible cutoff. We already have the sensitivity, we already have the specificity. Now computing for the sensitivity plus specificity minus 1 of each cutoff, we're going to have these values. So sensitivity plus specificity, so in this case 100% plus 0%, so that's 100%. Minus 100%, so that is 0. And then 1.0 plus 0 0.111 minus 1, that is 0 0.111. 0 0.909 plus 0 0.111 minus 1, that is 0 0.02. 0 0.818 plus 0 0.222 minus 1, that is 0 0.04. Now, the optimal cutoff is the one with the highest value of J. And in that case, that is this one, which is 1.84. So we can say here that greater than or equal 1.84 of microRNA-223 is the optimal cutoff in identification of AML. Now graphically, where is 1.84? We said a while ago that this point is when the cutoff is 0.82. This point is the one with, in which the cutoff is 0.93. This one is when the cutoff is 1.02. This one is when the cutoff is 1.05. So this is 1 1.26, 1.31, 1.33, 1.38, 1.40, 1.43, 1.44. So this one is the point in which the cutoff is 1.84. And looking at this vertical line segment, it shows that that line segment from that point to this diagonal line is the longest line segment as compared to others. Now we were able to identify the optimal cutoff. The question now is, is this a good ROC curve? In other words, does microRNA-223 really can be used to distinguish patients with AML and patients without AML? Now to answer that, it's better if I show you a test which is not good. 
or in other words, the one with a bad cutoff. So this data, as you can see, have quantitative variables, whatever these are, but take a look at the status. As the numerical values gets higher and higher, the identification whether a patient has a disease or not is not clearly identified. As you can see, it's just alternating between negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and so on. So there's no clear indication which is the good cutoff. So computing for its sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, and false positive rate, and graphing its ROC curve, we're going to have this figure. Now, if asked, given that this is a 1 by 1 square, since the length of this is 1, and the length of this is also 1, we know that the area of that square is 1.0. Now, if you are asked what is the area of this closed figure, in other words, the area under that ROC curve, this one, it may not be easy for us to identify the area. However, if we try to smoothen the curve, meaning if we're going to zoom out this curve, it will just simply show a diagonal line. Now, if you're asked what is the area under that ROC curve, it's like asking for the area of that triangle. And since the area of the square is 1, and the triangle, as you can see, is just half of the square, then we can say that the area of that triangle is 0.5. Or in other words, the area under this curve is 0.5. So given this figure, since this is a poor test, we can say that a quantitative test that does not distinguish the true status has an area under the curve or 0.5. Now, let's try to see now what a very good test result looks like. In this data, we still have the quantitative variables. But as you can see here, the status is very clear that those below 4.7 is negative of the disease, while those reaching at least 4.7 is positive of the disease. So in other words, it's clear here that the cutoff is at least 4.7. Now given this, we compute for the sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, and false positive rate. And drawing its ROC curve, we're going to have this ROC curve. So as we can see, sensitivity is 100%. That's why the line here did not move downwards. And then the false positive rate, are all zero as the sensitivity goes down. That's why we have here a line that goes down, but the false positive rate is fixed at zero. Now, the area under this ROC curve is simply the area of the square, which is 1.00. So this shows that a quantitative test that perfectly distinguished the true status has an area under the curve of 1.00. So given this, we know that a perfect test has an AUC of 1.0 and a very bad test has an AUC of 0.5. Now further, if we're going to identify the optimal cutoff using the Udens Index J, we may compute for the Udens Index J here by simply adding sensitivity again and specificity minus 1, we're going to index J. And we can see here that the optimal cutoff is at least 4.7. And we can see that the Udens Index J is 1.0. In other words, this is the optimal cutoff. This is the one in which the cutoff is 4.7. And the line segment here has a length of 1.0. Now, going back with the question, is this a good ROC curve? Again, we know that a bad ROC curve is the one with AUC of 0.5, while a perfect ROC has an area under that curve or AUC of 1.0. So given this figure, if asked, what is the area of this closed figure? We don't know yet, but at least we are sure that 
It's something that is greater than 0.5 since this area, this one, is greater than the triangle here but has a less area compared to the whole square. So it is something that is between 0.5 and 1.0. Now to compute for that area under the curve, we're going to use our this time. So let's open the file, mirna.r data. So after opening that file, since we're going to make use of the ROC analysis, which is not built in in R, we have to install that package, which is called the optimal cut points. And after installing that, we have to type library optimal cut points. Let's take a look at the mirna.r data. So notice that the AML still are at 0 and 1, in which 0 means absent and 1 means presence of AML. Now we may convert AML into present and absent by converting it to factor. So mirna dollar sign AML, then this is still mirna dollar sign AML, which means that the AML variable of the data which is mirna will be considered to a factor under the same variable in which the labels would be absent and present. So note here that absent comes first since this is the one which is coded lower, which is 0 and this is 1. So after doing that, you'll notice that as you type Mirna again, the data will now look like this one, in which as you can see, it's now labeled properly as present and absent. Now to run the ROC analysis, all we have to do is to make use of the optimal cut points function. And then after that, we're going to make use of x equals, meaning we're going to declare that our quantitative variable is Mirna and our categorical variable is AML. And then, R will ask whether which is coded as 0 or the one that is healthy individual or in other words, the one that doesn't have the disease. In that case, patients who are labeled absent are the one that are healthy. So, we're going to make use of absent here as the tag dot healthy equals and then we made use of the Udens index and then again the data file which is Mirna and then run the summary parenthesis results and we're going to have these results so it's very clear here that the cutoff is 1.84 which is the same cutoff that we had a while ago with sensitivity of 72.7%, specificity of 88.9%, and with UDEN index J of 0.616. So to answer now, what is the area under the curve that we have? That is the one that is AUC here. So we have 0.758 as the area under our ROC curve. In which a while ago, I've said that the area is between 0.5 and 1.0. So this is that value. So the question now is, is this a good ROC curve? Or in other words, does microRNA-223 really distinguish those with AML and not? We actually have a null hypothesis there in which it implies that the ROC curve is bad, in which the ROC curve is not good, meaning it's 0.5. And the alternative hypothesis, in which it states that the AUC is not equal to 0.5, indicating that our ROC curve is good. Now, we don't have a p-value here, as you can see, but this results here is the 95% confidence interval. Now, if that 95% confidence interval includes 0.5, then that shows that the p-value is greater than 0.05. However, in this case, as we can see, the 95% confidence interval does not include 0.5 since it's 0.513 to 1.00. So, in other words, it does not include 5, so there is sufficient evidence to claim in favor of the alternative hypothesis. So in other words, our p-value here is surely less than 0 
So to answer if this is a good ROC curve or does the microRNA-223 distinguish those with AML or not, the answer is yes because we claim in favor of the alternative. So to answer if this is a good ROC curve, again, all you have to do is to take a look at the 95% confidence interval. If it contains 0.5, then it is not a good ROC curve. Meaning, the quantitative variable cannot distinguish those with the disease or not. While if the 95% confidence interval like this one does not contain 0.5, it indicates that the quantitative variable can really distinguish those with the disease and not. Further, we may display the plot or the ROC curve by using plot parentheses results. And we're going to see this ROC curve, which is exactly the same as our ROC curve a while ago. And the good thing about this ROC curve is that it displays the area under curve and if the ROC curve is good or not. So since again, this 95% confidence interval does not include 0.5, then we can say that our quantitative variable, which is the microRNA-223, can really identify those with AML and not using this cutoff, which is 1.84. Now, to give you a sample write-up of the results, all we have to do is to claim that the microRNA-223 in which the AUC is 0.76 and with confidence interval of 0.51 to 1.00 was able to identify patients with and without AML with greater than or equal to 1.84 as the optimal cutoff, having sensitivity of 72.7% and specificity of 88.9%. Let's have another example. We're going to make use of the LSTs.R data, which is about a data set which was obtained from the cardiology department at the Galicia General Hospital in Santiago de Compostela, Spain. This study was conducted to assess the clinical usefulness of the leukocyte elastase determination in the diagnosis of CAD or the coronary artery disease. So let's open the file, the elastase.r data. Now we can see in the data that there are two essential columns, which is the elas, which is the leukocyte elastase, which is in quantitative form, and whether the patient has coronary artery disease or not. So let's make use of the optimal dot cut points function. So again, we're going to declare x as the ELAS, which is the quantitative variable, and then whether the patient has a disease or not, which is under the status column. And then the tag dot healthy is zero, since zero here means the patient has no CAD, while 1 means the patient has CAD. And then likewise, the methods is using the UDEN and the data is the elastase. And then run the summary, parenthesis results, and we're going to have these results. So as we can see here that the optimal cutoff is 37, so meaning... Greater than or equal to 37 is the optimal cutoff in diagnosing patients with CAD. That gives us a sensitivity of 68.8% and specificity of 67%. Now, when asked if the leukocyte elastase was able to distinguish patients with and without coronary artery disease, the answer is yes. So, having the AUC of 0.744, the 95% confidence interval here does not contain 0.5. So it rejects the null hypothesis that the AUC is equal to 0.5. So to write up the results, we may display the ROC curve after typing the plot results to generate this one and write the results as leukocytes elastase determination with AUC of 0.744 and this confidence interval was able to identify patients with and without coronary artery disease with at least 37 as the optimal cutoff, having 68.8% sensitivity and 66.7% specificity. Now before we end this video, just be reminded that 
the ROC curve is used when the clinical test used to classify whether the patient has a disease or not must be the gold standard. Meaning it was not diagnosed using some rapid test kit or some test which is not accurate. Next is the sample size must be considerably large to ensure you that the AUC generated is greater than 0.5. Having a lower sample size will give a wide confidence interval of the AUC. Now, to give a narrower confidence interval of the AUC, meaning for the 0.5 not to be included in the confidence interval, there must be a considerably large sample size. And then make sure that the number of cases and the number of controls is not necessarily equal, but at least they're almost equal. Lastly, we're hoping that there are no other factors which is called as covariates that influence the status of the patient aside from the variable being tested. Otherwise, we have to include it as the covariate in the model, which is beyond the scope of this video.